Environmental Science, Subject Rule Triple Three, Module Eight B, Energy and Environment, Lesson Thirty One B, Energy Conservation Part Two. Hello, learners. Welcome to our Environmental Science in the Secondary Course of NIOS. We have discussed about impact of energy use on environment. Also discussed about conservation of energy at household level, community level, and so on in our previous program. Now we all know that excessive energy use and over exploitation of natural resources. Had immensely impact on environment. Now time has to come to reduce the adverse impacts of growing energy use of energy on the environment. It is important to improve energy use efficiency and switch to in environment friendly energy resources. Improved energy efficiency and better energy management will help in preventing environmental damage and help in financial accounting. We need to conserve this because. Conserving energy not only helps to conserve resources but also translate into financial saving. During this program, this is lesson 31B, Energy Conservation Part Two. I am Ilam Gupta, Course Coordinator of Environmental Science. Welcome you in this program. Now comes to the objective: describe the concept of energy efficient buildings and towns, describe the limitations of alternative sources of energy, define the concept of energy auditing. Now, first we will discuss about Concept of energy efficient buildings. Under first, under this, first we will talk about energy efficient devices. Day by day, we see that the demand of energy is increasing all over the world, and as the demand is increasing, energy prices are also increasing. It is very necessary to develop energy efficient devices to save energy. Compact fluorescent lamps replace incandescent bulbs, that is tungsten bulb. open utensil cooking have been replaced with pressurized steam cooking and of course solar cooking many energy efficient devices can be manufactured and many technologies can be used for energy conservation in many industries older and inefficient equipments have been replaced by new and efficient one other energy efficient devices which can be used for energy conservation are diamond hot plate PRP block bullock cart tube lights with electronic ballast device which helps in reducing energy consumption by limiting amount of electric current in an electric circuit diamond mono block cloth improved crematoria natural water cooler etc as shown in this figure natural water cooler is a safe drinking water device which works on the principle of cooling by evaporation no external use of energy such as electricity or ice is required promoted by government of gujarat improved crematoria a prefabricated cradle like iron structure designed for proper accretion for proper combustion consumption of wood for cremation is much reduced and consequently trees prevented from being axed next is many energy efficient building or houses were made to save energy different types of energy, new technologies were used to make them energy efficient some examples of such energy efficient buildings are eco house orovelo visitor center solar kitchen inhof tank oscillatory buffalt reactors first we will take eco house it is a residential building and was constructed in mid 70s It was equipped with solar cooker and a multi-fold biogas plant. Rainwater harvesting is also used in this house. A roof-mounted mount wind generator was also contemplated but not installed. Eco-friendly technologies were used in this house, such as rainwater harvesting with underground cistern, roof-integrated solar water heater, window-mounted reactable solar cooker. multi feed biogas plant usable as septic tank if required three different types of experimental roofs hollow concrete tiles prefab brick jack arches and madras terrace roof designed for ventura ventura system of using high and low pressure for sucking in cool air and pushing out hot air through roof ventilator c figure Next is Aurovelo Visitor Center. It is a public building constructed in Pondicherry. Now it's called Pudicherry. In 1989, 
several cost effective and alternative technologies has matured by mid 80s attempts to integrate everything in a functional and pleasing environment was quite successful and won the Hassan Fethi International Award in 1992. The following technologies and equipments were used during this, its construction, compressed earth blocks, ferro cement roof channels and building element, solar chimneys that is a type of passive solar heating and cooling system that can be used to regulate the temperature of a building as well as providing ventilation. A wind pump is a type of windmill which is used for pumping water. Solar water pump, PV pump, a solar photovoltaic water pumping system consists of a PV array, a DC or AC surface mounted submersible floating motor pump set. Electronics, if any, interconnected cables and an on off switch PV array is mounted on a suitable structure with a provision of tracking electronics could include maximum power point tracker, inverter and control or protections, storage batteries will not con constitute a part of the SPV water pumping system. Next is water generator and other is other structure used in decentralized waste water system, convey treated and dispose or reuse waste water from small communities, building and dwelling in remote areas, individual public or private properties, waste water flow is generated when appropriate water supply is available within the building or close to them. This system treat, reuse or dis dispose the efficient in relatively close vicinity to its sum of generation. They have the purpose to protect public health and the natural environment by reducing substantially health and environmental hazards. It is in community kitchen and constructed for prepare 2000 meals a day. This concept began to be implemented in 1994 since solar energy is abundant in southern India. Using steam as a heat transfer medium for preparing the meal was the obvious choice. Solar kitchen possess the features such as compressed earth blocks, 10 meter long ferro cement proof channel, a collective kitchen for Aerovillo community. The solar kitchen has big, a big solar bowl on its roof. Decentralized wastewater system consisting, cons consisting of in-house tank, baffle reactor and polishing pond, solar bowl concentration of 15 meter diameter, scuffer community solar concentration. IMHOF tank is a septic tank with improved technology for waste water treatment. Oscillatory baffled reactor are in, are in demand in chemical and pharmaceutical industries for efficient use of reagents, solvents and energy. The waste produced is minimized. Next we will discuss about concept of energy efficient new town. Energy conservation should be considered as in any comprehensive land use planning process. A variety of heating sources like fuel, gas, oil, wood, electricity, the sun and coal, etc. are used in homes and business houses. The energy consumption and conservation of energy resources is the hot topic these days. Substantial economic saving can be realized through energy conservation, effective use of land could prove to be a good way of energy conservation. The design of the town should be such that developmental densities should be highest towards the center of the town which is served by municipal water and sewer. Outlying areas should have much less constant construction. A town can be oriented towards becoming eco-friendly only with the cooperation of the inhabitants. It may have structure of eco-friendly archi architecture, but unless the inhabitant resolve and practice energy conservation and eco-friendly way of life, the purpose of energy efficient town would be defeated. Education, eco-friendly behavior and ecologically sound infra infrastructure could truly create energy efficient green town. First, we will take education is the best way of creating awareness of for energy conservation. A branded program can be created with a little and logo to imprint the conservation message 
on all township communities and documents. Energy conservation information should be present on the website local cable access station. Next is changing behavior for right attitude towards energy conservation. Residents should be encouraged to drive less, walk and bike more by installing bike road racks at public buildings. A best way to conserve energy is to switch off the lights while leaving the room. Shut down the computers when not in use. When appliances are not in use, they should be unplugged. Lower the thermostat in the winter and raise them in the summer. Household and business waste should be recycled. It will positively result in energy conservation. Next is green infrastructure. Light bulbs should be replaced with the energy efficient compact fluorescent bulbs as they are 75% less energy and last up to 10 times longer than standard tungsten bulbs or incandescent bulbs. Appliances and office of equipment should be replaced with energy start rated units. It will long lower energy uses and costs. Now we will discuss about green buildings. Currently this method is expensive but energy conservation elements that are not higher in cost that of the traditional products can be used. Besides the this, uh, that is green building besides the setting design and construction of buildings strongly influence the amount of energy needed for heating cooling as well as for lighting proper design building orientation construction and landscaping provides opportunities for energy conservation measures such as passive solar space domestic hot water heating mechanisms natural lighting and photovoltaic electricity production besides renewable energy sources should be used more instead of non-renewable energy sources. Other measures which will be helpful energy efficient may be building designs and construction practices should promote energy conservation, use of renewable energy sources should be encouraged, facilitate energy conservation as related to local transportation needs. Awareness should be raised among people for conservation of energy structure, promote community self-sufficiency and independence with respect to energy levels and increase the use of the least environmentally damaging sources of energy. Town should minimize its energy consumption. Next we will discuss about limitations of alternative source of energy. Once humans became aware about the limited stocks of fossil fuel, use of renewable sources of energy began. Currently the sources of energy in global use are fossil fuel that is 88%, Nuclear energy that is 0.5%, other sources such as tidal, tidal, wind, geothermal, solar, etc., energy, etc., that is 0.7%. Now you are well aware that limitation and impacts of fossil fuels, we have already discussed little more in previous lessons also, but they have, these sources are renewable, but they have their limitations. First source is nuclear energy production by nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. Advantage is no air pollution, fuel efficient, limitations in high cost of construction of nuclear plants, fear of security and nuclear accidents, problems of safe disposal of nuclear waste. Next is hydel power or hydel energy. Production is dams built on river for electricity generation. Advantage is world's hydroelectricity electricity capacity high. Limitations are ecosystem behind dams disturbed, human settlements uprooted for building them, habitat loss and consequent biodiversity loss, developmental high cost. Next is solar energy production from natural sunlight. Advantage is environment friendly, ample or unlimited availability. Limitations are limited capacity for storage of sunlight, cloud cover, man usefulness, collecting equipment exp expensive. Next is wind energy production by fans for directing winds in use from long for irrigation crops, advantage no pollution, available for free, limitations are not suitable, everywhere or intermittently available, fans of windmills, Visual hazards for flying birds and aeroplanes. 
Next is tidal energy production by harnessing tidal power by suitable structures. Advantage is free and clean. Limitations are structure used for harnessing energy expensive. Plant disrupt natural flow of estuaries and concentrate pollutants in the area. Next is geothermal energy production is well drilled to trap steam which powers electrical generators. Steam naturally produced from underground water which gets heated due to very high temperature in that region. Advantage environment friendly limitations are steam con contain hydrogen sulfide having odor of rotten eggs, minerals in the stream corrosive to pipelines and equipment causing maintenance problems, minerals in the water toxic to fish. Next is biofuel, first we will take firewood production, cutting trees for fuel, wood or and burning them straight away, advantage cheap so popular in underdeveloped and developing countries, limitations comparatively low level of energy, bulky so difficult to transport, burning would cause air pollution, destruction of forest to obtain fuel wood and so desertification release lot of fly ash. Next is biomass conversion production obtaining energy from chemical energy stored in biomass or live material burnt directly for cooking or to produce electricity converted to ethanol or methane that is biogas. Advantage renewable energy limitations may lead to food shortage because nutrient not returned to soil from biomass. Growing maize for ethanol requires more energy expenditure than the amount of energy in the form of alcohol retrieved land for growing food used for growing biomass for conversion into fuel. Next is soil waste production, waste sorted and burnable material separated advantage decreases cost of fresh disposal, reduces need for landfill sites, limitations causes air pollution for burning releases, carbon dioxide and other gases. Next we will discuss about the concept of energy auditing. Energy auditing is a systematic approach to monitor industrial energy consumption and to find out the sources of energy waste. It consists of activities that seek to identify conservation opportunities before conducting or developing any energy saving program. These audit programs are helpful in understanding and analyzing the energy utilization of any organization. The audit programs have to identify and reduce energy wastage. Now come to the role of um, energy audit. The first and the most important role of energy auditing is to identify the area of energy consumption and to find the overuse for accessing the opportunity of saving energy. In this way money can be saved for example, during the audit of a factory the employees of the factory can be trained for the use of energy saving equipments. Also they would be made aware of the need for energy conservation. So there is an attitudinal change for reducing energy use and energy wastage. It is amply clear that energy auditing plays an important role in energy conservation. Now come to the analysis of energy use is done for identifying the area of energy consumption. This analysis can be used in the view of management structure and procedures for controlling energy use. Some meters can be installed in different plant locations to pinpoint the actual energy consumption per area. This data could be helpful in allocating energy use. With the help of this plant manager can list all the equipments used and the corresponding operating hours. This information can play an important part in creating spreadsheet information and the charts resulting by can prove useful for analysis energy conservation efforts made to reduce. Dear learners, we would like to add a little bit about energy conservation initiative has taken by our government. The Petroleum Conservation Research Association PCRA is created in 1978 that engages in promoting energy efficiency and conservation in every 
walk of life pcra has done mass media campaigns in television radio and print media this is an impact assessment survey by a third party revealed that due to these larger campaigns by pcra the public's overall awareness level has gone up leading to saving for fossil fuels worth crores of rupees besides reducing pollution the bureau of energy efficiency be is established in 2001 that is responsible for promoting energy efficiency and conservation protection and conservation of natural resources is done by cnrm that is community natural Res resource management dear learners before we wrap up we would like to recap the main points that is what you have learned some new technologies can be used while building construction to save the energy limitations of alternate sources of energy by the help of auditing we can come to know the areas where energy consumption is higher than and accordingly we can plan to reduce the uses of energy to save it awareness among people about the concept of energy conservation could be very helpful energy can be conserved by reducing wastage and losses improving efficiency through technological upgrades and improved operations and maintenance on a global level energy use can also be reduced by the stabilization of population growth we observe energy conservation day on 14th december every year dear learners this is all about to energy conservation part 2 we will come again to meet you with a new program of environmental science so <coughs> save our cities save our soil save our air and save our water so think green thank you